Hello everybody and welcome to the fourth and final video in this Python web scraping tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can find the cheapest in stock products on Newegg. Now I was going to have a bunch of other websites combined into this search. However, that's just going to take way too long to do. So what I show you here, you can modify slightly and apply it to other websites and you could combine say four or five websites together when you're searching for a specific product. Now the product I'm going to be targeting here is a graphics card. Now you can really do this with any product. In fact, the script I'm going to write here should work with pretty much any product you can search up on Newegg. And again, we're just going to be looking for the cheapest uh, in stock graphics card and we can pick whatever graphics card model that is. In fact, I'll make it dynamic so it'll ask you what graphics cards you want to look for and then you can search for those graphics cards. Now what we're going to do is just spit out a huge list that will have the price of the graphics card, the name of the graphics card. Obviously, there's a ton of different models and then the link for that GPU in case you want to go and actually purchase that. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so in front of me, I have my Python script. I have these imports. So beautiful soup for requests and RE for regular expression. We're going to need all of these. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is ask the user what graphics card it is that they want to search for. So I'm going to say GPU equals input uh, like that. And I'll say, what GPU do you want to search for? And really, we could change this to what product do you want to search for? OK, so and then we'll do a space there. Nice. So the user is going to input what product it is they want to search for. Then what I'm going to do is send a request to Newegg. So I'm going to say URL is equal to I'm just going to copy in the URL here, but I will go to this URL so you can see what it looks like. So this is actually the URL that we want. And let me just describe what some of this is. Uh, so first of all, let's actually just go to Newegg. So notice I'm on Newegg. I searched 3080 and then I went here and I checked the in stock for availability option. Now, what that did is change the URL up here to say D equals 380. So that's our search term. And then N equals 4131, which is the filter. So that's saying only give me ones that are in stock. So you can see shows in stock right here. If I remove the and N, like that. Notice it no longer is only giving me the ones that are in stock. So that is kind of how that works. So what we can do is if we want to change what we're searching for, we can just change this D parameter. So change that to 3070. Notice this now changes to 3070 and now we're looking for 3070s. So that's kind of how this works. And this is what the URL is. I'm on .ca. Obviously, if you're in a different country, change uh, the, I guess, extension, whatever you call that, .com, whatever. OK, so Anyways, that's what we're going to look for. So this is what we want to send the request to. So we're going to say I don't know, page is equal to requests. If we spell this correctly dot get. I want to get the URL and then dot text. And then I want to read this in with beautiful soup. So say doc is equal to beautiful soup page. And then this is going to be the HTML dot parser or is it parser.html? I forget. No, html.parser is correct. So let me just put these together. OK, and now that we have this, the first thing that I actually want to do here is I want to figure out how many pages of results we have. So if you go here, notice how we have five pages, right? Page one of five. So I actually want to figure out how many pages we have because I don't want to just look on the first page. I want to look on all of the pages and note if I go to like page four here, see how the URL changes and says at page equals four. So we can easily send another request to get the next page if we have the end page and we know how many pages we need to look through. So what I want to do is find this text right here on this page, excuse the voice crack, find what this number is and then use that to determine how many pages we have and then loop through all of the pages and repeat, you know, finding all of the products. So it's a little bit complicated to do this, uh, but I just clicked right on what I want. So on the text here and pressed inspect and then notice it actually highlights it in this window for me. So we're inside of this strong tag and it's inside of a span that has the class list tool pagin uh, pagination text. So what we can do is search in the document for a, uh, a tag that has this class and then we can look in the strong tag and then we can try to find this number five. Again, not super easy, but I will show you how we do that. So uh, let's go here. Just make this full screen and I'm going to say 
page underscore text is equal to doc dot find and then it's going to be class underscore equals and then put this inside of quotes. OK, so let's just print this out and see what we get. Page underscore text. OK, uh, so what product do you want to search for? Let's go with 3080. Actually, I realize I, I can't use this to do that because uh, Sublime text doesn't work for console input for Python. So sorry, just excuse me as I run this script. Uh, Python web scraping four, I think, dot pi. OK, so I'm just going to run it from terminal. Uh, you can excuse what's happening. But anyways, let's go to 3080 and let's see what we get. OK, so we get this span and then we want what's actually inside of the strong tag, right? It says one over four. So since we're going one over four, then what I want to do is grab the four. So let's first get the strong tag. So let's do dot strong. And now let's see what we get. And OK, let's just go 3080. And now notice we actually get this this. Sorry. Now, what I want to do is I want to grab this four. However, if I try to access the string that's inside of here, I'm going to get an error because these comments are kind of messing everything up. So what I'm actually going to do seems uh, a little bit counterintuitive. But what I'm going to do is turn this whole thing into a string. I'm going to split the string and find what's on the right hand side of the slash. I'm then going to split the string again uh, such that I can grab this four. So it's going to seem a little bit weird, but just follow along with me here. So I'm going to say pages equals page text. I'm going to convert this to a string and then I'm going to say dot split. I'm going to split this at the slash and I'm going to get the last element. Now, uh, actually, sorry, I'm going to get the second last element and you'll see why in a second. So if we look at this here, notice that we have a slash and then we have this slash. So what happens when I split this string is it's going to give me a list that has this as the first element, has this as the second element and this as the third element. So I want the second element, uh, the second last element, really second element or second last element. And so I'm going to grab that, which will give me this. So now if I print pages and I go here and run this, uh, let's go to 3080. Notice that I'm getting this. So now what I'm going to do is since I don't know if the pages is going to be uh, a number that is more than one digit, so like 25 or 100 pages or something like that, I can't just grab this index. I need to split the string again at this. So I'm going to split it at the I guess this is the less than sign or the greater than sign. I'm going to split it at that regardless. Then I'm going to remove the very last character and then I'm going to grab whatever number is here. And that should work if we have multiple pages. So <laughs> let's do this again. So I'm going to now split this. I'm going to split this at this symbol and I'm going to actually just look at what that is to start. So let's go here and let's go 3080. And now notice that's what this looks like. So I want to grab the last element and then remove that. So let's grab that. So let's go negative one and then we're going to go colon negative one. And what that will do is remove the last element for us. So now let's print this out. <coughs> Excuse me. 3080 and we get four. Now, the only last thing we need to do here is convert this to an int. So we're going to say int of this. And now if we go here, same thing, it should just work. Let's actually go 3070 and see if we get a different number of pages. And here we get five pages. Perfect. So now that we have the pages, we want to loop through all of the pages and grab all of the elements on those pages. So I'm going to say for page and range pages. And then I'm going to copy this right here. The reason I'm going to copy this is because now I want to send another request, but I want to change this by adding a page is equal to page, right? So I'm going to look for the specific page. Now, I think this is fine. Yeah, that looks fine to me. Uh, I was going to do something else. I think that's actually OK for right now. OK, yeah. So what this will do is give us the GPU search result at a specific page. Ah, What I need to do is change the range. So pages plus one. So the reason I'm making this change here is because we don't want to start at zero whenever we're in a for loop and we just use range with an end value. We start at zero. I want to start at page one and then I want to go up to uh, page whatever the number is. So I need to add one to this. Otherwise, we won't hit the last page. That's just how for loop and the range function works. 
Okay, so now we are sending a request and grabbing every single page. And now on every single page, I need to grab every single item that says 3080 in it. So the thing is, not all of the items that are on here are actually going to say 3080. Uh, I'm pretty sure. So what I want to do is just do my own filter and make sure that I'm only grabbing items that actually say 3080 in them or whatever the um, GPU is that I'm looking for. So we're going to do that. We're going to say doc dot find underscore all. This is going to be uh, we'll call this results. Um, actually, no, we'll call this items is equal to docs dot find all. And I'm going to say text is equal to re dot compile. And I'm just going to look for the text of whatever the GPU is that I'm looking for. Now, I really should call this something else probably. So let's rename this from GPU to search term uh, just so that it's more dynamic. OK, and the reason I'm doing re dot compile here is because when I do this, it will actually match any text that contains this. If I just put search term, I didn't put it inside of the regular expression, it would not match the text that um, there was anything different than the search term. I misexplained that. Really, what I'm saying is like, let's say we have the text 3080 and we're looking for 3080. This will match with 3080. But if I had like 3080 for the win and I just was looking for 3080, it wouldn't match because this has extra characters in it. Whereas using this, both of these will be a match. Hopefully that makes sense, but that's why I'm using re.compile. And now I want to loop through all of the items. So I'm going to say for item in items, print item. And let's just look at what items we're actually getting here. So let's run this. Let's look for a 3080 and let's see. OK, so obviously we're getting a ton of stuff. It's going to keep printing stuff out. So let's go here. Whoa, OK, we have many, many things here. Um, OK, yeah, so we're getting quite a few things printing out. OK, that's fine. Anyways, we're going to continue now. And we're going to look for the name of the item, the price of the item and the link for the items. So we will continue in one second. We need to quickly thank the sponsor of this video and the series, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use when preparing for your software engineering coding interviews. They have over 160 coding interview practice questions that cover everything you need to know to ace your software engineering interviews. Check them out from the link in the description and use the code TechWithTim for a discount on the platform. All right, so I was just examining the output that we got there and I was realizing that we weren't quite getting exactly what I was looking for. Now, let me just inspect on one of these right here and show you that what I actually want to look for is only items that are inside of this div right here. So I'm going to copy this class name. But if you look at this div, this div is where all of the content is from my search results. Now, if I just look for, say, 3080 or 3070, it's going to give me like the text up here as well. I don't want that. I only want actual items. So what I'm going to do is copy this class name because this is the div that has the table inside of it. And then I'm going to look only inside of this div for any text that matches what product we're looking for. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to say uh, div is equal to doc dot find. And then we're going to say a class underscore equals that. Uh, and then this needs to be inside of quotation marks. Again, all this uh, code will be available in the description in case I'm losing you here. And then rather than saying doc, we're going to change this to div. So now we're only looking inside of the div. OK, so now when I print item, uh, we should get some better results here. So let me clear this. Let's run this and let's go 3080. And now let's see what we get. That's much better. So now notice we're only getting the text. We're not getting a bunch of other random crap that we don't need. Just text is what we're getting here. So that's exactly what I want. And now that I have this text, what I need to do is look at the parent of this text because that text is great. But that is this, right? So oops, let me get out of this Okay, So let me right click on this. So this is the text that we're getting. We're getting what's inside of this link, right? So the first thing I can do is I can grab the href from this link. So the parent of all this text is going to be a link. So what I will do is grab the href, so the actual link from the, the link from the text. Uh, so let's do that now. Let's go parent is equal to item dot parent. And then what I want to grab is the href. Now, the thing is, I'm still going to get some results here that for some reason 
will not actually have a parent tag, which is the A tag. Just weird things can occur. And well, if I try to access the href property of a tag that doesn't have that, I'm going to get an error. So I just need to make sure that the parent is actually an A tag before I try to do that. So I'm going to say if parent dot name equals equals A, then what I can do is say link equals and this will be parent href like that. And then I can print the link. And I'm just going to say link equals none for now, just so that this print statement doesn't crash. So now let me try this. I'm going to look in the parent, which will be the A tag. I'm going to try to grab the link. So the href from that. OK, so let's do this. Uh, actually, let me just clear this first because it's probably be better. And now let's run it 3080 and see what we get. OK, so now notice we're getting a bunch of links and we're also getting a bunch of nuns. So it seems like we get link none, link none, link none. And I think when we're getting none, that's because we're finding 3080 as maybe the attribute of some tag or something along those lines. So what I'm going to do is say, OK, if the parent tag is not an A tag, then we're just not going to bother adding it in. We'll just skip it. So let's do that now. We'll say if parent dot name does not equal A, then we will continue. Otherwise, we'll say the link is equal to parent href and we can remove this link equals none. Great. So now we're getting the link and we already have the name that stored an item. The last thing we need is the price. So how are we going to get the price? Let's go back here. So the price is kind of hard to find. But if you notice here inside of item container, we have this, which is the image. We have item info inside of item info. We have where our actual name is. So from the name, our parent is item info and then the parent of that is item container. And that's what we want. So now we want to look up two parents. We want to go the parent of the parent. So we get item container. And then from item container, uh, if we go inside of here, let's look at this. We want to look at item action price and then whatever the current price is. So price hyphen current. So let's do that now. We're going to say um, next parent is equal to parent dot parent. And then we're going to try to find the price. So now we're going to say price is equal to next underscore parent dot find. And this is going to be price hyphen current. And this is the class name. So we're going to say class underscore equals that. And then we'll print out the price and see what we're getting. OK, so let's try this clear and 3080. And we get a bunch of nuns. OK, so that's interesting why we're getting a ton of nuns. Uh, let me have a look here and see if I have messed this up somehow. All right. So I think I'm having some issue with the parents here. Uh, for some reason, parent parent is not giving me the div that I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do is show you uh, kind of an interesting thing that we can actually do here to locate a specific parent. So if we go here, the parent that we actually want is item container, right? We want the one that has item container as the class. So what I'm going to do is rather than trying to you know, find how many parents there are, I'm going to use an interesting method that we have here, which is item dot find underscore parent. So what this will do is actually look for any parent, so any ancestor in the tree that has a specific class name in our instance. So I want this to be item container. So now let's see if this is actually going to work. So again, this will look up in the tree and find the first parent that has this class name. Uh, let me make sure that's correct. Yes, that looks correct. OK, so let's clear this, run this and go 3080. And now notice we're actually getting all of the prices, right? So they're showing up kind of inside of this span and inside of uh, what do you call it? The strong tag. So what I'm going to do now is look for the strong tag of this price current class or price current div or whatever it is. So now let's do dot strong and let's see if we get anything better. OK, 3080 and then notice we get all of this. So now that I have the strong tag, I can just look at the string of this. So let's just go string like that and let's run this 3080. And now notice I'm going to get all of the prices. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. I have now found all of the prices of all of the GPUs. So now what I want to do is take all of this and put this inside of some type of data structure so that I can use it and print it out later on in the program. 
So up here, I'm going to say uh, items underscore found is equal to this is going to be a dictionary. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say items underscore found, and this is going to be at the name of the item. So I'm going to say item, which is the actual text that contains 3080 is equal to. And then it's going to be another dictionary that has the price. So we can put the price and has the link, which will be equal to the link. So there we go. Now, down here, I can print out items found. So let's go ahead and run this. I'll, I'll pause for a second so you guys can see what I just wrote, but I just created the dictionary and added as a key another dictionary and then the, sorry, not as a key, as a value another dictionary. And as the key, I'm using the actual text that contains 3080. Okay, so let's go here. And I keep saying 3080, it's whatever text you type in here. Like if I do 3070, we'll get different results, obviously. Uh, but 3080 is just the one that I've been using. So this is going to take a second because it needs to go through all of the pages before we get any output. But now we're going to get the output. And it is kind of a mess here. We'll clean this up in a second. But notice we have price, we have the link, and so on and so forth. Now, the last thing I need to do is convert this price to an integer because right now as a string, it's not that good to us. And for me to be able to convert this to an integer, I need to remove the comma from the price. So I'm just going to say dot replace and then I will remove the comma and replace it with an empty string. OK, so now we should have prices that do not have the comma in them. And now what I want to do is sort all of these items by their price and then have some nicer output for them. So this is a little bit of more advanced Python code to sort a dictionary. To sort a dictionary, you need to first convert it to a uh, list of some sort, sort the list and then convert it back to a dictionary. Now, in this case, I'm actually happy with my items being in a list. And so what I'm going to do is the following. And in fact, it kind of defeats the purpose of making a dictionary. But regardless, I'll show you how this works. So I'm going to say sorted underscore items is equal to. And then we're going to say actually sorted. We're going to put our items found dot items. So if you're unsure what items does, it's going to give us a tuple that has the key and then the value. And then I'm going to sort it with the following function. Lambda x x1 at price. This might seem a little bit confusing, but what this is going to do is create all of the tuples that contain the key and the value. The value is a dictionary that has price and link inside of it. And then I'm passing the function that I want to use to sort this as lambda. So this is an anonymous function. We take one parameter x, which will be all of these items. We then say x1. So this will give us the second item, which will be the dictionary uh, right here. And then we access the price. Again, a little bit confusing, but hopefully that makes sense. We're just sorting by the price of all the items in the dictionary. And now what I can do is loop through sorted items and print them out. So I'm going to say for item in sorted items. And here we will print the price of the item, the name of the item and the link of the item on different lines. So I'm going to say print item. And item zero will be the name because that's the key. It's in the first tuple. It's the key. Uh, sorry, first, what would you call this index of the tuple? And then I am going to print uh, items one of price. And I'm going to put a dollar sign uh, near it too. So I'm going to make an F string. And I'm going to put a dollar sign. Uh, oops, I did this the wrong way. I want a dollar sign and then I want to put this inside of my curly braces. OK, so now we'll actually print dollar sign, then we'll print the price. And then I'm going to print the link. So we'll say items one link. Now, just to clarify, because I'm sure some of you are kind of confused here. When I do dot items, what this gives me is a list of items. So the items would look something like this, you know, 30, 80, for the win and then we would have price. Let's just go like two, nine, nine, whatever. And then we would have link. And then there'd be some link here. So that's what all of our items are going to look like. So that's why I'm accessing them in this way, because I'm going to sort all of the items by the price. And then what I'm going to do is print out item zero, which is the name and then items one. Sorry, this is item, not items. So item one of price, which will give me the price and then item one of link, which will give me the link. Hopefully that makes sense. OK, so let's now run this 
and see what we get. So let's go here and let's go 3070 this time. Oops, never mind, 3080. And none type object has no attribute string. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so dot strong apparently for some reason that's not giving us the string. Uh, so let me see what's wrong with that. All right, so I was just debugging this for a minute or two and found a few mistakes that I'll go through right now. So first of all, this is a modification. So for some reason, I guess a few of the entries don't have a strong field. Um, I'm not sure this will happen sometimes where some of the HTML will be off on some of the stuff that you're doing. So to fix this, not very good practice wise, I just put a try and accept block. So pretty much if this fails and I'm not able to find the string from the strong tag and I change this to find strong rather than just dot strong, that shouldn't make a difference. But I was just trying it in case that was going to make a difference. Uh, anyways, so I put the try and accept and then changed it in, in this way and then all is good. Now, I also added key equals. I forgot to do this before I had it like this. So you need to do key equals lambda and then that will actually allow you to sort. So let's make sure we have that. And then one thing I'm going to do before I show you the output here is I'm just going to print a bunch of uh, dashes here just to kind of separate them because it's really hard to read it otherwise. And now let's go here. You can see I was testing it. Let's run this. Let's go 3080 and let's see what we get. So now we get all of our results. Uh, we can see that the cheapest 3080 in stock, $2,000, 2,223, 2,409, 2,613, 2,649. And then the link is available for all of them. So if I click on this one right here, uh, let's grab it and let's actually paste it in. And let's see here if this is available. And there you go. So we have the 3080 Ti. I believe we had the correct price for that. Yes, we did. And then we could go ahead and purchase it. Now I'm curious if this one is just showing me 3080 Ti's. No, okay, it's showing me 3080s as well. So let's just try this link out and make sure this is working. Okay, so let's grab this and paste this in here. And then there we go. We have this perfect all individual project. Oh, okay. So this is you have to buy this in a combo, I guess, or something like that. Regardless, it worked. So with that said, I think I'm going to end the video here. I just wanted to show you how you would actually go about doing this to automate some type of task. In my opinion, this is pretty useful, pretty interesting, especially if you're looking for graphics cards or any product, really, rather than going and having to find it yourself, you could write a little script like this, although given that might take more time than searching for it. Regardless, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another one.